magnify your name. Hallelujah. We come to glorify your name, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you for being a good God. Thank you for being a hallelujah, a merciful God. Thank you for being a kind and compassionate God. You told us, God, that your mercy endured forever. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Hallelujah. God, we thank you now. Oh, God, we just thank you one more time, oh, God. Thank you, God, for allowing us to come before you, oh, God. Hallelujah. God, first we ask you, God, to forgive us of our sins, oh, God. Oh, God, wash us in your blood, oh, God. Wash us over again one more time, oh, God. Oh, God, let your will be done in our life. Let your kingdom come, oh, God. And God, we'll praise you. We'll magnify you. We'll give you the glory, oh, God. For without you, God, we can do nothing, oh, God. God, we thank you for this special day, oh, God. For first of all, we thank you, God, for waking us up. Clothes in our right mind. That's what's special about it, oh, God. You gave us one more chance, oh, God, to come before you, oh, God. Thank you, oh, God, for every mother today, oh, God. Those who are even playing in the role of mothers, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you today, oh, God. For, God, we glorify your name, oh, God. God, we ask today that you will bless every mother everywhere today, oh, God. Oh, God, strengthen them, oh, God. Strengthen them in their inner man, oh, God. Strengthen them in their bodies, oh, God. Strengthen them in their minds, oh, God. Oh, God, help them today, oh, God, to be what you call them to be, oh, God. We thank you today because you are God, and you can do anything but fail, oh, God. Thank you for how good you've been to us, oh, God. Now, God, we ask that you would do it to every home today. Hallelujah, oh, God. We give you glory today. God, some mother have lost a child today, oh, God. But, God, we ask that you would lift up and bow down here, oh, God. Today is the day, God, that she will remember, God, the day she lost her child, oh, God. But, God, let her know, God, that you will never leave her nor forsake her, oh, God. Oh, God, touch the day. Build her up in the old shop. Build her up, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh, God, for how good you've been to us, oh, God. Now, God, we ask that you would have your way in this place today. Move by your spirit and anoint for your glory, oh, God. Oh, let everything done in the day, God, that you get the glory, oh, God. Oh, bless the word of God today, oh, God. Open up deaf ears today, oh, God. Oh, God, help us to receive the word today. Bless the man of God. Let him preach like he never preached before. God, we thank you today. We magnify you. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. And he leaves. When the 
for your sweet spirit that is in this house. Father, we give you thanks for waking us up this morning. We thank you for clothing us, oh God. We thank you for shelter today. Ah, right, God, we thank you for food on the table. God, most of all, we thank you, God, for salvation today. We thank you for saving us. Oh, God. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost today, God. That keeping power today, God. Ah, we thank you today, God. Father, we pray today, God, that you continue to bless these your people that are gathered together on this day, God. God, as we celebrate these mothers in the house today and all around the world, God, encourage them, God. Strengthen them, God. Love on them, God, all that they give so many times. But God, let this day be a day, God, that we celebrate them and we give back to every one of them. We thank you for the mothers, God. We thank you for the mothers of the church, God. We thank you for all today. I pray now, God, that I, I stand before these your people declaring this word in this house today. Allow me to speak with clarity and understanding, God. God, move this out of the way, God, so that you will be magnified and that you will be glorified, God, and the devil will be horrified in the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise today. Hallelujah. Just look at somebody and tell them I'm safe in his arms. Amen. You may be seated in his presence on today. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. First of all, let me just say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Come on, men. Let's stand to our feet. All the men, all the brothers in the house. Come on. Let's celebrate the women of God today. Come on. Thank God for the mothers. Come on. Thank God. Come on, men. I need to hear your hand clap today. Amen. We celebrate every mother in the house on today. We celebrate you all. We celebrate you. God bless you, man. Thank you so much for, amen, helping me salute our mothers today. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. You know I'm happy today. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We are celebrating our head church mother. Amen. A virtuous woman of God. An honorable woman of God. That are leading, amen, the women, amen, in this church. We thank God for our own head church mother. Mother Jesse Daddy. I know she's uncomfortable, amen, but mother, you deserve it. You deserve it. We're so happy for her. Amen. Our family being here with her today. Amen. I already been acknowledged. Amen. But we want to say thank you again. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Other White is, amen, already acknowledged. Amen. Administration of the church. God bless you on today. Amen. But I'm happy that my mother is here as well. Thank God. Thank God for my mother. Amen. Being in our midst today. Amen. And just to all the precious people, amen, all the special guests, visitors, and friends that are here, thank God once again for our future viewers on today, amen. Happy Mother's Day to you as well, amen. How many of you are ready for a word from the Lord? Is there anybody but me that needs to hear a word from the Lord on today? Amen, amen. Grab your Bibles. Let's go to the Word of God today. Amen. The book of Matthew. Amen. The book of Matthew, the 15th chapter. Amen. We'll begin in reading at verse 21 thereof. Amen. Again, just want to say thank God for your great new Bible way. What you did on last Sunday was phenomenal. Amen. First lady, amen, along with myself, we appreciate you. Amen. Certainly we miss her. Amen. With us today, but she's celebrating with her mother. Amen. amen. Continue, amen, to solicit your prayers for her mother as well on today. 
Thank you, Jesus. St. Matthew, amen, the 15th chapter, amen, verse 21, amen, is where we will begin our reading on this morning, amen. And the word of God reads, then Jesus went this and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman, somebody help me say a woman, came and came out the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me. O Lord, thy son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came Amen. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then, she, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from this very hour. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to use for a subject today, amen, every dog has its day. But I wish you'd look at somebody and tell them your day is coming. Come on, tell them your day is coming. Uh, don't y'all get mad at me this morning. I'm in the Word. I'm in the book today. I'm in the book. I'm in the Bible today. Your day is coming. In the text here, amen, we have amen. Amen, as we noted, amen, and we talked about another one before, but today, amen, we have one of the unnamed women. For this particular woman is the seventh woman of 24, amen, unnamed women, amen, that are in the Bible. For those of us, amen, that try to study, amen, the word a little bit, amen, we know that everything that is mentioned in the text has some type of relevance. Are y'all going to pray for me today? That when we see the mention of names, amen, and the names of places, amen, that there is something that God is trying to tell us. But in the text today, she, amen, has no name. She is the seventh of the 24 women, amen. God has given her no name, and that is because it does not matter who she is. What matter is what's happening to her. Uh, look at somebody tell her, no matter who you are. What matter is what's going to happen to you. No matter who you are, what, what matter is what's going to happen to you even today. Here she is now, here, amen, the woman in the text, amen. We get the perspective of Matthew, amen, the tax collector. He is short and he's brief and he's straight to the point. Matthew is concerned about the bottom line, so he gives her no personality. He's worried about, he's 
concerned about the final, the conclusion of the whole matter to be. He's precise, amen, amen. He's, amen, here is a woman with no name. Good God, my He lays the groundwork, amen, for her dilemma today in four different ways for you note takers today. Matthew talks about it. He, amen, he tells us about, number one, the place that she's from. Mm -hmm. Secondly, amen, he tells us about, amen, her people. Thirdly, he tells us about her position. Amen, and then fourth, he tells us, amen, about her problem. But he never speaks about her purpose. I want to let some women know in the house today, amen, you have purpose. How many of you know, amen, you got to watch people, amen, that know everything about you, amen, but they don't know your purpose? Oh, you might as well say amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, brothers, amen, if y'all just excuse me, I want to help the women out just a little bit today. Amen. So those women of you that are in the house today, amen, I want you to part that hair back. Amen. Get it out of your eyes. It's yours. You bought it. And look at another woman that's looking at you. I know I'm in the house today. And tell her you got purpose. You got purpose. You got purpose, women. I know the devil has tried to tell you everything else. But I want to remind you today, you got Purpose. So here in the text, in the text here, amen, he lets us know, amen, that the unnamed woman of Matthew, the 15th chapter, has had, is having a hard time living. Oh my God. How many of you know, amen, that despite the fact that Jesus came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, amen, sometimes life is hard. For some single women that might be in the house today, amen, you got the car note, you got the rent, you got the mortgage, you got the gas bill, you got the water bill, you got the light bill. Oh, I forgot, you got to pay the taxes now and the grocery bill. Sometimes it's just a struggle. Living. We know, amen, that all he came, amen, to give us life, amen, but the devil, he came to, amen, he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I believe I can help some brothers today. And sometimes you got to struggle to have just a quality of life. Yes, it can be a struggle. And I know that we're living in a time now, amen, where people are looking for someone to blame all of our struggle on. It's the president. The Democrats. It's the Republicans. When one is in the White House, we blame it on that one. When the other one is in that, we blame it on that one. Good God Almighty, never seen nothing like this in my life. But I want to let you know, amen, amen, you know today that despite, amen, where you are, what's going on, what you're going through, it's not your fault. It is your responsibility, though. Mm. So that is why I say life is the sum total, amen, of the decisions that we make, amen, and then it is this, the decision, amen, of those that we fail to make. How I many you know that we can fail to make some decisions for our lives? Oh, yes. We 
get bombarded up, amen, but all these things that are going on around us, and we forget the main thing. I want to help you today. Thank you, Jesus. It is this. You will go to jail if you short, amen, if you shoot, amen, and kill someone. You will go to jail if you Amen. Choose not to get out of the car. Amen. Of someone that shoots and kills someone. In other words, you can go to hell. Amen. You can go to jail by your association. I hope y'all caught that. Either one. You can go to either one of them. By your association. Help me today, Holy. You got to decide, amen, that to get out of the car. You got to decide, amen, to let some things and some people alone. Amen. But wait, Brother Rogers, there is a small percentage of life, amen, that has had nothing to do with me. Well, in the text, nothing that has happened to her is her fault. Can we make the scripture plain today? But here again, someone else, amen, that is a victim of circumstances. You are in some things even now that you had nothing to do with. Help us today, Holy Ghost. You're being bound, you're being fought, amen, you're caught up. Amen. You are experiencing. You're going through things. You're in a dilemma. You are facing with, amen, consequences of decisions that you did not make. So once again, we find ourselves sitting at the table, the spade table, having to play the hand that we've been dealt. Let me go on. Here she is. She's been dealt, amen, a bad hand. She's a good girl, amen, in a bad situation. Amen. And there's anybody that felt, amen, to know about that. Amen. You can be, amen, a good person, but caught up in a bad situation. Every now and then, amen, good people find themselves in a bad situation. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you about, amen, the place, amen, that she lived. Listen, if you please. She lived in Tyre. She lived in Sinai. This is a city, amen, that has walls built around it, if you allow me to paint the picture. They did this so that they could keep out the enemies. But how many of you know that every now and then you know that sometimes, amen, when you build walls, it's not what we keep out, but look at what you're keeping in. Ah, help me today, somebody. Good God Almighty. Here is Kyrie, amen. They built, amen, a wall, amen, to keep the enemy out. Amen. But the problem is when the tragedy broke out, amen, they had a hard time getting out themselves. Look at God, my God. You ought to take a look around where you are even now and notice where the exit signs are. So just in case something happened, you know how to get out. Am I right about that? You need to know how to exit a situation or people that you just might be involved in. Ah, help me today, Holy Ghost. I believe the Lord sent me here to tell somebody, amen, that has got themselves, amen, in a situation that you can get out. Whatever the number you have found 
yourself in back against the wall. Sickness has come over your body. Amen. But you can get out. You may be broke, busted, and disgusted. You can get out. Depression is all around. But God has an exit. For, come on, tell your neighbor God has an exit for you. Hallelujah. I don't care. Amen. What you, amen, have gotten yourself in. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how long, amen, you can get out. It does not matter how low down the situation is. God has an exit. just want to remind somebody, he want me to remind somebody that's here on this Mother's Day, amen, there is an exit for you today. We know, we know, we know, amen, that they are, amen, the descendants, amen, they are the cursed descendants of Noah, talking about, amen, the Canaanites, amen, where she's from, amen. They are the children of perversion and sin. They are the children of idolatry. Here, here, in the Canaanite family, they got men that walk soft. They risk is been, in other words. Got women that walk hard. They wear comeback boots for any occasion. Y'all get the picture. In the Canaanite family, you got people that, amen, that offer, amen, food to idol gods. All kind of sexual perversions, amen. And yes, Matthew is low down, amen, this morning because he tells us her people are low down. She's a Canaanite. Well, what do we do? I'm glad you asked that question to me this morning. When you are around, when you are attached to people that add questions to your character, what do we do when our people are not the people, amen, in the White House? What do we do when our people are not the ones in the governor's mansion? What do we do when our people are not the ones on Sugar Hill? But our folks, say, amen, are those that live down in the cut. Amen. They live down in the valley. Amen. Our people are the ones they curse, they drink. Amen. They smoke. Amen. They tell lies. Amen. I got a bunch of babies, amen, they got a bunch of babies out of wedlock. What do we do when our brothers and sisters steal, kill, and lie? Good God Almighty. People, no matter where you try to go, no matter how many degrees, amen, you may have on your wall, amen, people are people. Amen. And you are doing nothing low down and nasty. Amen. And you ain't robbing nobody and killing nobody. You're not stealing for no one. But everywhere you go, you are reminded of your people. Amen. Am I by myself this morning? Good it's a bad thing when people won't let you live down your family reputation. Oh my God. I'm talking to somebody today. They tell you you are the one, amen, whose sister, amen, wears a mustache. They remind you of these things. You are the one whose brother, amen, wears a dress and your father sells drugs. You got people that are just remind you about the situation. Mm, mm, mm. But you have to keep reminding them that you are not the one. You didn't do any of these things. It was your people. 
Somebody say, your people did this. Your people did. I didn't do this. It was my people. Huh. It's a bad thing when, when, when you're defined by your place. It's a bad thing when you're defined by your people. Somebody say, help us this morning, Lord. That's not all. Defined by her place. City with walls. And then secondly, then defined by her people. Then thirdly, defined by her position. Bad enough, she's a silent. Bad enough, amen, she's a Canaanite. But she's a Gentile. Help us, Lord. Here, here, Matthew, the tax collector, amen, he wants to tell us, amen, she is the wrong creed. She's a Gentile. So what do we do? She was a Gentile. Not influence. No rights. Had no prestige. Here in the text, this morning, amen, this woman has Amen. No standing. She has no rights to be in the text. It's out of sync. It's out of order. One would say. It seems as though we should be talking about Mary. Amen. Somebody else. Amen. That has no rights. Have you ever gone somewhere? Amen. And people looked at you. Amen. And they looked like you weren't supposed to be in this crowd. Their look can tell you, what are you doing here? Their look can tell you, you don't have the prestige that we have. Your father is not like our father. Your mother is not. Have, am I the only one that's been ever found myself in a place? My skin color says that I don't belong. My skin tone says that I don't belong. Ah. Mm. But here she is. She's got a problem. She's got a problem. She had a daughter that was grievously vexed with a devil. She had a bad situation. But I want, I want you to know this morning, Greater New Bible Way, that our problems levels the playing ground. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can't let my hallelujah fool you. This In other words, you can't let my ta-ta fool you this morning. In other words, you can't let my glory be to God fool you this morning. Good God Almighty. Come on, look at your neighbor. Tell neighbor, neighbor. I got some problems. I got some stuff. And I got some situation going on in my life. I even got a situation that is grievously vexed with the devil. Money is trying to get away from me. I got a relationship that the devil is showing up in. I got a son and I got a daughter that needs to hear from the Lord. My body is racking with pain this morning. My mind is troubled this morning. I don't know which way is up or which way is down. I got a situation that is grievously vexed with the devil. And you know what, church? When I get and I find myself in this type of situation. I just start writing down some things that I need the Lord to do for me, mother. I start work this out, work that out, heal this, heal that, move this, move that. And I lay them down wherever I am. I just make it my altar. And I just start walking around that thing. I start walking around those things. Whatever that situation is. Whatever that problem is, I just start walking around. If it's in my house, I walk around my house. If it's in the church, I walk around the church. If it's on my job, I walk around my job. If it's in my kids, I tell, tell the Lord about it. I tell, Lord, you know my problem. 
You know my situation. And I need you to step in right now. My problem is too hard for me. This situation, I cannot handle. The load is too hard for Dennis to bear. And I said, Lord, you know my problem. You know my situation. And you know what the Lord told me to tell somebody here today that has those same situations going on? Look at your neighbor and tell them one more time. Neighbor, whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it is that you're going through, tell them your day is coming. Come on, be not dismayed, whatever be time. God told me he will. He told me to tell you he will take care of you. As a matter of fact, you ought to look at somebody that's looking at you now and tell them your day is here right now. Come on, tell somebody your day is here right now. I know you had some struggles. I know you had some heartaches. I know you had some headaches. I know it's been days that you've been down almost level to the ground. But God told me to tell you, your day has come. Somebody ought to clap your hand and give God some praise. My day is coming because the man of God told me that I have purpose. The man of God told me, amen, that my problems would not last always. That God has a plan for my life. Amen. You may call me a dog. Amen. You may call me a cat. You may call me a rooster. You may call me a chicken. You may call me a dunker. Whatever you call me, I'm in the hands of the Lord. And I know if God can use a donkey, he can use me. Good God Almighty. I'm not too big, I'm not too small, that my God can use me to do his work. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is dead. Because I know one day night is coming in my life. I won't be able to preach like I preach. I won't be able to teach like I teach. I won't be able to run like I run. But I must work while I'm healthy. I must work while I got strength. I must work while I got my eyesight. I must work while I can hear. I must work while I can run. Is there anybody here? that know that God has called you to go to work. In other words, there are no more excuses. Tell somebody, no more excuses. No more excuses. All of us got some things. All of us got some hidden things that is going on in our life. I would do but I would go, but you know I got this condition. I would do this, but my money is funny. I would do this, but I don't have the right clothes. No more excuses. Y'all hear me this morning. Women, raise your children. Forget about who left you what he didn't give you, what he owed you. Pick yourself up, put your makeup on, put your fine clothes on, brush your teeth, comb your hair, and say, I know I'm God's child. He may have left me, but I'm still beautiful. tell you this, when you forget about yourself, 
and consecrate on him. He'll take the places that the devil could have imagined. When you consecrate on the Lord and all that he's doing for you, he'll take you to a mountain that you never thought you could climb. I'm talking about my Lord and my Savior. He'll put a robe on your back that you thought was meant for somebody else. When I think about my Savior, he'll put you in a house that you didn't even build. When I talk about my Savior, he'll give you money that you never could have imagined when you were young that you would come into. When I think about Jesus and all that he's done for me, don't you know I got a hallelujah down on the inside of me. Something about Jesus, it makes me happy. Something about Jesus, it makes me glad. I just love calling on the name of Jesus. Because I found out that when I call on that name, it soothes all of my trouble. When I call on the name Jesus, it soothes all of my doubt. It calms all of my fears. It lets me know that I can make it. It lets me know that I just need to get up and keep moving forward. Something about the name of Jesus. It encourages my mind when it seems like all is against me. Something about calling on the name of Jesus. Have you ever tried it? I dare you to call on the name of Jesus. Can I get somebody to just call on his name? Say Jesus. Say Jesus. It's Jesus in the morning. It's Jesus at noonday. It's Jesus when I go to sleep at night. When the load seems like that I've carried all the day long. It's the heaviest when I go to bed. I just call on the name of Jesus. After I call him a few times, no doubt not long thereafter, Ellen White, every problem that I encountered, every situation that I went through, he erases it out of my mind, and he gives me a good night's rest, and I wake up in the morning with a smile on my face, peace in my mind, joy down in my sanctified soul. I just love calling on the name of Jesus. You ought to try it. You ought to try it sometime. It works. It works. It works. It does not matter what it is that you're going through. There is power in the name of Jesus. Tell somebody, today is your day. We're standing all over the building. We're standing all over the building. Today is your day. For you to come out of that depression. For that sickness to leave you. Whatever it is that you have found yourself in dealing with. Today is your day. God told me to tell you that. God told me to tell you that. Yes, I know there are many that are sad because their mother is gone. Heart is heavy. Amen. But God will be a mother for the motherless. Oh, yes, he will. God will be whatever we have need of. But you got to trust him today. You got to trust him in all the areas of your life. You can't say, God, I need you over here, but I got this one over here myself. I need you on the left side, but I got the right side. I need you on the right side, but I got the left side. I need you in front of me because I got my back. You need God in every area of your life. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. You got to learn to acknowledge God in all of your ways. Let him direct your path because sometimes 
our emotions get involved. And when we act on our emotions, we can mess some things up. I know y'all heard the saying that never make a decision when you're heated, when you're mad. You need to go somewhere and pray. Because sometimes when you say it, when the words come out of your mouth, you can't grab them and pull them back. Those words have already gone out and they made a decision for you. They've created some problems for you that you can't take back. Am I helping anybody today? You got to learn to let Jesus fix it for you. For he knows he knows the problems that we're going through. He knows what we're dealing with. I just want to admonish you to do that today. God can. God can. Lift your hands all over this building today. Every man, woman, boy, and girl today. I want to let you know there is no secret to what God can do. What he's done for another, he'll do the same for you. It doesn't matter your position in the church. You may say he only moves with the mothers and the missionaries. No, he moves with the lay women and the lay men too. Not just the deacons and the senior brothers, not just with the elders. Amen. He moved from the front to the back. All you got to do is give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Amen. Come on, Mother Moraine. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give Mother Moraine. Amen. She's going to help me do something, amen, as we honor our head church mother today, as we show her some love. Amen. Help me out just a little bit, Mother Moraine. God bless you, Mother. Mother's Day, Mother's Day. 
But Mother Danders, we just wanted to give you something on behalf of Sister Quick and myself to show our appreciation for your service. Amen, amen, amen. Mother Danders, I just want to thank you for, for the hard work that you do. Uh, the work that you do a lot of times behind the scenes no one know about. I, I want to thank you for that also. And I also want to thank you for just keeping my wife uh, in your prayers and calling her and asking her about how she's doing and also keeping her involved. And I appreciate it. Happy Monday, Mother. Uh, 
everything's been said already. So I just want to tell you I love you. And give it a little token. Mother, 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 mother. This is my mother. I just thank God for you. Uh, I met your daughter. I thank God for sharing your mother. We had a lovely dinner or brunch yesterday, and I thank God because your mother is the sweetest, and so are you. And I, I feel like I've gained a sister, and your mother is just a wonderful person, and I enjoyed it yesterday. But mother, you are such a mother. You're not a gossiping mother. You're not a mother that, I mean, she, she can keep whatever you tell her in. And she is a true woman of God. I just thank God for the late night talks, early morning talks when I just help you when you're cleaning. But I just thank God even for just the, for just for just giving me that wisdom that you have shown me, and just even you know just instilling in my life. And from from the music department, we certainly love you. I'm gonna try to say this without crying. <laughs> you're looking at. But I love you, Mother Dandridge. You are a prayer warrior. My mother and grandmother taught me how to pray, and, and you just fit that. You're not old enough to be my mother or grandmother, but you are so lovely. I'm older than what I look like, but you're so lovely. You're so lovely, and you're a smart, you're a businesswoman. You tell, you tell the young women about their businesses. You tell us how to treat each other, how to treat our husbands had a, a pick up and if we make a mistake, how to go on, you have shared your life with us and that is priceless. But this is a little token from me and I love you very much. Thank you for all your prayers.
And I love God and I love you because of you and also because God loves all of us. Amen. Amen. Lift that gift up. Lift that offering up. Lift those tithing up. Amen. Let God see you give it. Open your heart today as you give to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give today. And we ask you, Father, to bless the gift, the giver. And God, we pray that the increase will come. God, through our giving today, let the manifestation of your word, God, be revealed by your power because you're not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent. But Father, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall come to pass. We thank you for that gift. We sanctify it unto you. That Father, that as we cast that bread up on the water, not many days hence shall it return. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you looking Amen. For a church where love flows because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. 